Our God is a good God. Are you glad to be in the house this morning? Well, let me tell you this. In this church, Jesus loves you the most. Hallelujah. I repeat, Jesus loves you the most. And let me tell you, when Jesus loves you, he loves you wholeheartedly and to an extent that you can never even comprehend and receive his abundant blessings upon your life. A lot of times we have failed to receive the blessings that God wants to give us. And a lot of time we struggle to um, comprehend the goodness of God and the greatness of God in our lives. Well, let me encourage you this morning church that God is a good God. And no matter what we go through in life, he is always with us. Always remember, God is the God of your storms and the God is the God of your peace. I say something that God is the God of your mountaintop experiences and God is the God of the valley experiences. It doesn't matter what you're going through, God is with you. Praise the Lord. So I would encourage you to let you know that no matter what you're going through today, Jesus is with you. Jesus is in your boat. No matter what the storms you face, God will always come through to you. And let me tell you that no matter how harsh the winds are and how boisterous the waves are, and even though you may be fearful that your boat may break, but if Jesus is with you, let me tell you, there's always an opportunity of a calm and always an opportunity of peace. And there's an always an opportunity of a blessing because the giver of blessing and the creator of blessing is with you. And let me tell you today that we will not seek the blessing of God, but we will seek who God is because when we seek him, everything else is given to us. The Bible very clearly says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And that's what the Bible says. So when we seek God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our spirit, everything material and, and, and physical that you can fathom of or imagine of comes chasing after you because the Bible says he's the God of your needs. He's the God of your wants and he's also the God of your desires. And I like that. And the Bible very beautifully says that even before we ask anything in prayer, God knows our needs and he provides us in advance. Hallelujah. Have you, did you pray today that Lord give me breakfast because there is no breakfast on my table. And let me tell you, you had a full nice breakfast and you're seated here. And you have got no doubt that when you go back home, you, there'll be a nice meal waiting for you. And you will enjoy a very sumptuous meal that God has already provided for you. You have not prayed for it, but it is there for you. Hallelujah. So God says, you know, the needs that you have, I will always come and provide for you. Even before you ask of me, I will provide them for you. Isn't that beautiful? You have shelter, you have clothing, you have food. You are blessed with the abundance and the blessings of Jehovah God. And we give God the glory for all the blessings it is. So God is a God of your needs. God is a God of your wants. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, Psalm says in the book of Psalms chapter 23 verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That means I shall not lack any good thing. Praise the Lord. Then again the psalmist says in the book of in Psalm chapter 37 verses 4 and 5. Psalmist David says you know what? If you delight in the Lord also, he will grant you the desires of your heart. So God is a God of your desires as well. So, you know, you dare to dream. You be audacious in your dreaming, in your, in your visioning, and you're thinking that how great and how big and how awesome your God is. And if you can understand that how awesome your God is and how big your God is, you will start, stop thinking small all along your life. You will not no longer have and entertain a poverty mentality in your mind because if God be for you who can be against you when God says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants prosperity comes from him but we are not only preaching the prosperity gospel my dear brothers and sisters we are preaching about that God who is the creator of whole universe and with whom and in whom all things are there for all sufficiency for his people hallelujah a lot of time you see there are three phases of a man Either a man is entering into a storm or he's already in the storm or he's out of the storm. There are three phases of man's life. And ever since you have been in your, whether you are 17 year old or 18 year old or 60 year old or 80 year old, doesn't matter. You've gone through a phase of storms in your lives and you have seen that how beautifully God has orchestrated 
your deliverance. God has orchestrated your provision. God has orchestrated your safety and your provision and your protection. No matter what the storm had been. It didn't matter how many cycles of recession the world economy has gone through, but God has seen you through. God has brought you out. You were jobless, but then you were gainfully employed. You had no monies, but then you came to a place of abundance. You know, God is a God who is true to his word. No matter what storm you had been through, you had an ill health scenario, but God came through and he delivered you and he healed you and set you free. Hallelujah. You were struggling with some terminal illnesses. God turned it around and it made it beautiful for you and he said God I want to say thank you Lord because I was struggling I was dying but now I have life and life forevermore and he was so excited and you started worshiping the Lord and he said God if you were not there for me I would have been dead meat but praise be to God that today there is a heartbeat in our hearts and today we have the breath in our nostrils and that breath is the breath of the Holy Ghost. It's no longer Samuel's breath. It is the breath of God that breathes within me and when we breathe in and breathe out the Holy Ghost you will see there is life and life forevermore. There is no death, there is no suicide, there is no depression, there is no dejection, there is no demotion, there is no degradation, there is no decay, there is no despondency, there is no digression. Because when these all these D's come from the demonology and this comes from the pit of hell, but let me tell you my Jesus came so that he will have life and life more in abundance. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a big clap offering. He deserves all the glory. When Jesus comes, he turns it around for you and for me. We are turned around. We are changed around. We have now come on the solid rock, the holy ground of Jesus. He's the rock of our salvation. We often hear that life is short. Better enjoy it. But I would say, tell to you, how about eternity is long? Better prepare for it. It's not that we eat and drink and marry and then we go down to a grave and we have no hope for tomorrow. But let me tell you that's not what Christ teaches us because Christ is the hope of our salvation. When Christ came, he gave his life, he was raised up from the dead, he gave us hope in our dead situations. He breathed life in our dead nostrils and he said, now Samuel live. And you will not only live for 120 years on this earth, you will live for eternity with me. Hallelujah. I am a product of eternity and so are you. And everyone who watches us live and everyone who sees us through the uh, live streaming. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, they have eternity dwelling in them. They may not realize it now, but I pray that today you will have the revelation of eternity. And your eyes will be gripped to eternity. You'll know whether I live or die, I am in Jesus Christ. Because death cannot have dominion over you. Neither that grave can keep you down for long because when the trumpet is sounded and the call is made, I tell you, there'll be the biggest shaking that will take place all over the world uh, that the dead in Christ are going to rise up first and those who are alive will be translated into eternal glory. You and I will come and rule and reign the planet earth with Jesus for a thousand years and we are living in the, in the fall feasts. Uh, we are living in the festivals of the Lord right now. On the 30th of September, we started the, the Rosh Hashanah. That was the time of the feast of the trumpets, where the trumpet will be blown, and the last trumpet will be blown, and there will be a, a, a cataclysmic change all across the world. And let me tell you that we are the people, those who observe the feast of the Lord. Let me tell you, when we observe the feast of the Lord, we are preparing for that prophetic advent in the coming future in the name of Jesus, because the summer feasts were already fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Passover was fulfilled, and the weeks was fulfilled, Pentecost was fulfilled. But this particular fall feast uh, is still to be fulfilled uh, in the coming glory of glories. And there is a prophetic element to it. And therefore we are the church that believes in the feast of the Lord. Uh, we believe because it is for perpetual statute unto the people of God. When in the millennium you and I are going to reign. Uh, we are going to reign in the feast of the Lord. In the joy uh, of the Lord. And we will keep the Shabbat. Uh, and we will bless the name of the Lord God Almighty. Because we are living in the time uh, of a glorious era. Where Jesus is about to come so soon. Just the other day we celebrated Yom Kippur. 
Why is it said celebrated? Because Jesus, when he died on the cross of Calvary, he died for the world. But when the holy priest and the high priest goes into the high temple and he goes into the holy of holies, he goes for one purpose. He does not go for the whole world. He goes for the church. He goes for his own. Hallelujah. The high, high priest doesn't go for the whole world. But the high priest, when he goes in, he goes for his own. My dear, dear brothers and sisters, the high priest of your confession of your faith has gone into the Holy of Holies. He's taken his blood and on the day of Yom Kippur, he says, you dare to pray, I will forgive your sins on one day. I will remember them again no more. Praise be to Jesus that our sins are forgiven. And we don't have to beseech and we don't have to grieve and we don't have to be sorrowful. We are joyful for Yom Kippur because that's the time that God comes down and says, I will remember the sins of Israel no more. They have been wiped clean and that's what Jesus says. I will remember your sins no more because once I have forgiven, there is no power of demon that can remind me that you are a sinner. And there is no power of your haunting thoughts that can remind me that you are a sinner. Because now those who are born again in the spirit, they are the sons and the daughters of God. And and they are in the presence of God Almighty. It is the blood covering of Yeshua the Messiah. Yom Kippur comes from the Hebrew word kafarit, which means to cover. My dear brothers and sisters, is the blood of the high priest uh, that he goes uh, and he does the job of the work of the Holy Spirit and sprinkles the blood so that the blood covers us. Uh, and let me tell you that we have been covered by the blood of the Lamb uh, and our sins have been forgiven uh, and we are the people of eternity. Hallelujah. If eternity doesn't ring a bell in your heart, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day that you can make Jesus Christ your personal savior. Receive him in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. And today you will be born again into the kingdom of God. And your name will be written in the book of heaven. Go ahead, take the water of the baptism. Go ahead, get filled with the Holy Ghost. And I promise you that you will live in the abundance of the joy of his kingdom. And you will never regret the decision that you have made to follow Jesus. Because God is going to come and bless you abundantly. So my dear brothers and sisters, we go in the storm, we remain in the storm, we get out of the storm. But that's the life cycle. But having said so, let me tell you, the mountaintop experiences are beautiful. There can be pain in the valley, there can be fear in the valley. That's why Psalmist David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Jesus comforts you in your valley experiences. But let me tell you, valleys are the places of fruitfulness. And God is interested that his church will bear fruit and fruit in abundance in the name of Jesus. Every year he expects a greater fruit abundance, a, 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 fruit, a greater produce, a greater harvest. And remember all the three feasts, the main feasts of the, of, of the, of the festivals of the Lord. They are in the, in the festivals of the harvest time. Because God is interested in the harvest. In the Passover time, it is the harvest of the barley. In the summer time, it is the harvest of the wheat. In this time again, there is our second harvest of the barley and the wheat together. The greatest harvest in the month of October. So God is interested. Before the coming of the Lord, there will be a greater harvest. That is a prophetic element to the fall feast. There will be a greater harvest before the coming of the Lord. Because from all over the world, people will be coming running into the kingdom of God. And they will be surrendering their lives to Jesus. And they will say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And they will be ready to die for Jesus. You know why? Because we are entering into a storm that is way beyond our comprehension. Because that's what the Bible talks about. And Jesus very clearly talks about that in the book of Matthew chapter 24. And he says something very beautiful. And if you can ponder with me a little while in the scriptures this morning. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple in Matthew 24 1 to 14 and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple and Jesus said to them do you not see all these things assuredly I say to you not one stone shall be left here upon another but that shall not be thrown down these are the words of Jesus and yes, after Jesus spoke that 70 years later down the line, not even a single wall of the walls of Jerusalem, neither of the temple remained there. Every, every stone was demolished and every stone came down. But Jesus' prophecy is not only for that moment. Jesus' prophecies and the word is eternal. It occurs again and again. 
So always remember when a prophecy has come to you, it may be for a season, but there may be an additional element to that prophecy that God wants to fulfill at the later course of time. So Jesus was talking that and he said something. Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when will these things be? A beautiful question. Tell us when will these things be? We are all interested. Tell us when our promotion will come. Tell us when our disease will go over us. Tell us when will I get well? We go to the doctor. He prescribes you medicine and he says, doctor, when will I feel better? And it's a logical question. Of a human nature having said so that these are the logical questions of the disciples of Jesus saying when are these things going to take place and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age and Jesus answered and said to them take heed that no one deceives you take heed come and tell your neighbor take heed no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and will deceive many and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet you lift up your eyes around the Middle East you lift up your eyes around the world everywhere there are drums of war there is noise of war there is sound of war that you can hear Everywhere you will find turmoil, everywhere you will find calamities, everywhere you will find uh, that the people's mandate is being uplifted than the mandate of God. And having said so, he says, you will hear of war than the rumors of war. See that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass. It will come to pass. Don't pray against them, but pray that God's grace will abound over the church during that period. A lot of time we don't want war but my God is a God of war hello good morning my God is a God of war he's a fighter he is a destroyer he destroys every evil that he sees he's a righteous God he's a just God he's not only God is love he's not only God a buddy God you can put your arms around him and then sit around that how you want to sit and how you want to act in the house of God no sir there is divine order in the house of God and that is why those announcements are made from the church that there'll be divine order during the service there'll be divine order and within the family there'll be divine order during the Lord's table why because there is divine order it's not a club it's a church there's a difference between a club and a church a club you may want to do what you want to do but in the house of God you must do what you ought to do come on there is an order in the house and to find out the order you need to know the word of God and need to follow the truth of the word of God that will set you free. So the Bible here is very clearly it says for nation will rise up against nation and verse nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines, pestilences and earthquakes in various places. I was doing the statistics in the last year alone half a million earthquakes took place everything that is above six is recorded everything below six is not recorded half a million can you imagine the earth is reeling like a drunkard and they say every smaller earthquake that takes place is a cause and effect for a bigger earthquake that is about to happen And a lot of time we are so bogged down with the things of this world that we cannot lift up our eyes and look up to the heavens and say that my help will come from Jesus. That is why there was a reminder of the festivals. The reminder of the festivals was that God reminded the people of Israel that when you came out from your slavery, you did not come out poor and slave. You came out free and the freedom was in me, in my presence. Freedom was not what you want to do. Freedom was what you ought to do in the presence of God. Are you with me? It's not what you want to do. No, sir. There is an order even in the presence of God. The tribes have to live correctly. The tabernacle has to be placed correctly. And there has to be the right formation. If there was no right formation and there was not right order, the glory cloud will not come down. When there is order, the glory cloud will come down. When there is no order, no glory cloud comes down. My dear brothers and sisters, because if there is no order created by God's people in the tabernacle, his, his glory will not show up because there is an orderless situation, lawless situation in the congregation. 
and that is why it is imperative that we understand that we eat the word we dream the word we swallow the word we drink the word we live the word because then you'll understand the order of heaven you'll understand the order of the congregation you'll understand the order of the shakana glory when it comes down in the tabernacle it does not show up just like that it shows up because there is divine order that as commanded by the lord god almighty to the to the pastor and to the elders and to the tribes of the 12 tribes of israel but then jesus says further down then they will deliver you up to tribulation in verse 8 he says all these are the beginning of sorrows not yet these are just the beginning of sorrows then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you a lot of people are so afraid of tribulation my dear brothers and sisters tribulation had been a part and the parcel of the church right from its inception right from the time when it was birthed into this world there is a power of satan that works against the body of christ and there the church has constantly been under tribulation so don't get awry of tribulation don't get raptured before the tribulation tribulation is here to stay hello because there is a lot of wrong teaching in the world outside which is unbiblical and unfounded in the scriptures and therefore my dear brothers and sisters the bible jesus is very clearly saying he says there that they will deliver you up and up to tribulation and kill you all right and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake do you find yourself in a familiar situation that you have been isolated because you are a youth who stands for christ because they don't accept you they don't recognize you you are an alien to them are you still become an alien to your society very soon you will be if you're not yet because they'll start hating you these are jesus's word and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake all over the world on the garb of tolerance you are not able to speak the truth of the word of god because in your own church in the west you can be sued for preaching the gospel of jesus for preaching the truth of the word of God and my dear brothers and sisters that's the time has come that the Bible is very clearly talking about and the Bible records that and then many will be offended when you ostracized from your society you'll be offended your love will grow cold you will no longer follow Jesus you know why you know this following Jesus is a very tough line you know I have to carry my cross all the time I'm living in loneliness I'm isolated my clubbing my pubbing is over my old friends have gone my liquor has gone my smoking has gone my you know marijuana has gone and everything else has gone I have become like a hermit who must sit on the Himalaya top and start worshiping God there you may feel like that at times but let me tell you my dear brothers and sisters that you are an overcomer you are an overcomer you are a person of eternity you cannot live like a grasshopper looking around the grasshoppers mentality and looking at your surroundings and saying i will follow that religion i will follow that perspective and i will follow that vision no 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 i am here to follow the vision of my yeshua i'm here to follow the vision of the holy torah of the word of god and i will live by the word of god i don't care whether somebody follows me or not but i will follow the lord god almighty that is why on that day when I was baptized uh, that song was sung uh, I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back sir then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many and because lawlessness will abound the love of many will grow cold but he who endures till the end shall be saved tell your neighbor endure till the end It's important endure till the end then you will be saved endurance come on it's not a sprint of 100 meters it's an endurance it's a marathon it's a lifelong marathon of 120 years as prescribed by the holy word of god that you will run with god you will walk with god you will talk with god you will eat with god you will fellowship with god you will break break with god you will have communion with god constantly that is why in this church we have communion both services It's an ordinance of Jesus to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. 
but he who endures to the end shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come my dear brothers and sisters it's very important for us to understand very important is that the new world order system is working against you and me today constantly they have an agenda in the colleges and the universities and your social structures amongst your friends amongst your relatives that they will neutralize your faith and fight for your faith from you why because they are not happy concerning your work in the Lord they're not happy they are not happy. My dear brothers and sisters, in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 13, if you go back home and read, it's not on the screen. Go back home and read in 2 Timothy 1 to 13. There'll be an increasing lawlessness of mankind. And we can see it so evident all across the world, lawlessness in the world outside. And what is happening is it's so intense that the worldwide mandate will go out in the name of Antichrist to the effect that all who do not conform to the coming new world order must die. Must die. And there's a very beautiful passage of scripture you can go home and read in the book of Revelation chapter 13. It talks about the number of the beast. It talks about the number of the beast which is now in our neighborhood. The number of the beast will be marked, people will be marked. And the Bible records that he causes all the small and the great and the rich and the poor. Revelation 13, 16 to 18, you can go home and read. That under unless you have that mark of the beast, you will not be given food and ration and water. And if you do not take that mark of the beast, you will be killed. That means isolation is coming. It will be the people who will choose Jesus or will choose the mark of the beast. Are you willing to take the mark of the beast or are you branded for Christ? Are you sealed for Christ? The mark of the Holy Ghost has come upon your head and then the mark of the blood of the Lamb of the Passover and the mark of the Holy Ghost has come upon you. The firebrand of the name Jesus, Yeshua, has been written on your forehead. The world will see and know that you belong to Jesus and you are willing to pay the price for following Jesus. And the time is coming soon. Very soon. Christians will have to face this intense persecution in what the Bible refers to as the great tribulation. My dear brothers and sisters, the word of God reveals to us that a great multitude of believers in Revelation chapter 7, you can go home and read a great multitude of believers from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues of the earth will come out of the great tribulation. They come out from the great tribulation. These are the remnant of God. These are the blood covered children of God. These are the people who carry the mark of the Holy Ghost upon them. Who are not willing to take the mark of the beast upon them. No more entering of the chip in your system, in your body. You won't become a cyberborg. A biome. But the Lord has called you to be in his image. There is no marrying of humans with machines. Hello, I said something. No marriage between humans and machines. You must make a decision. We are living in the end time. Why I'm bringing this word to you in the fall feast is a time of joy and celebration. It is a joy of celebration. But this is a time of a prophecy that must be fulfilled. At the sound of the trumpet, at the sound of the trumpet, the Lord will come. But when he comes, there will be a time of preparation. And when the time of preparation comes, Jesus will come before that. The tribulation period will get over. And then only the church will be raptured with Jesus. Because the word of God says so very clearly. So Jesus revealed to us that the Antichrist will make war with the saints. And we know that in the book of Revelation chapter 13 and Revelation chapter 20. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus Christ has revealed to us that the mystery of the Babylon will be responsible not only for bringing the Antichrist to power, but for the atrocities of having both Christians and Jews put to death. Because there is a war between good and evil. And so that is happening. That is the new age Babylon. That's the same old Babylonian system that crucified Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Thinking that if they crucify Jesus once and for all, uh, this Christianity will be end. It will be an end of Christianity. But let me tell you, that was just the beginning of what God was about to do in the whole universe. They don't understand that. So the Bible is very clear here. 
New Age Babylon is referred to as being drunk with the blood of the saints and now the blood of the witnesses of Jesus. You can go home and read Revelation 17, 1 to 6. Since the great whore, war, whore of Babylon rides the beast, she fuels his cause with religious terror and spiritual reasons as to why Christians and Jews must be put to death. Thus, Christians will be put to death because they are a hindrance to the spiritual development of the new age revolution. And this new age has very subtly and seductively has seduced the free church. It's crept in. So many new age things have been involved in the church. Corruption has seeped in. My dear brothers and sisters, there is a warning from Jesus. We have to be careful and we have to be watchful in these end time days. That what we are called to do. So that is the new age level. Jesus told his disciples that the time was coming when everyone who kills you will be deluded into thinking they are offering service to God. Which God? That is written in John chapter 16 too. When a Christian is killed and there is a... In Africa, in Nigeria, in other parts of the world when Christians are killed, media is silent. Why is media silent? My dear brothers and sisters, why the media is not propagating and putting the front news that so many Christians were slaughtered? And what are the governments of the world doing today to protect the, the, the sanity of Christians and to protect the people of God? Hardly any effort. Hardly any effort, my dear brother, and that's the truth of the matter that I would like to address to you. There is a war. There's a new world order system that wants to obliterate uh, the, the factor that is stopping the anti-Christ power to be revealed. My dear brothers and sisters, and we have to be very, 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 very aware of this. You know, I was going through certain new age authors and the, from the books, what they were writing. How they were pushing the world government, it soon becomes evident that not all is peace and harmony. A massive bloodbath is considered by many new ages to be imperative to fully usher in the new age. And a few quotes I will give to you, just for you to for your understanding. All right, Gus Hall, the former general secretary of the Communist Party of U.S. has stated, I dream of a time, quotes, I dream of a time when the last congressman is strangled to death on the guts of the last preacher. And since the Christians love to sing about the blood, why not give them a little of it? All right. This is what he says. Hmm? It is ironic that the new world order is coming in the name of new age spirituality and democracy. I repeat that new age spirituality and democracy. Remember democracy is not a God given agenda. But it was prophesied in the book of Revelation 17 and 18. You can go home. Are you with me? The scripture never forecasts world dominion under communism or under anything else. To the contrary, if you study the book of Revelation 17 and 18, you go back home, a free enterprise is revealed there. The revelation of a free enterprise system in the last days along with the influence of sorcery. That is mentioned in 1718 of, of the book of Revelation. This spirit of antichrist though is detected in all movements seeking world domination. And the primary target of the new age Babylon and of the Antichrist will be Christians. Hello Christians, praise the Lord. I'm not trying to put fear in you. I'm trying to put the facts before you that you understand what to dis uh, discern between good and evil. What to take and what not to take and what to reject. What is where you draw the line and say no sir. Are you with me? Now see, listen to this. Another new ager. The reasoning is of course spiritual and what is it? It is taught that the sun and the moon and the stars have ushered the Christian era out and one new ager writes and that person is Vera Stanley Alder from the initiation of the world. The PCN age quotes the PCN age as you know last 2000 years or so as do other zodiacal signs its inception marked the beginning of the Christian era. It is passing out of the manifestation now as the new Aquarian age is coming in. Yet another quote from Hollywood Hills astrologer Ed Steinbrecher. He says, 
regarding the so-called harmonic convergence that had taken place claims that those who were not in tune with what was taking place could experience death another new ager who anonymously identifies himself as a solar quester writes in his book the world restored not destroyed and quotes he says these are wondrous times because the world has gone through this terrific experience as it spins slowly back to its rightful orbit in the position that it should be in the heavens and as this happens more and more more comfort and well-being will come upon this world and those who hinder will be removed other word he uses liquidated they must be wiped clean off the face of the earth my dear brothers and sisters these are the what new ages are writing new ages new ages and this new age doctrine of comfort and convenience has very beautifully come in the church casualness convenience comfort has entered very seductively into the body of Christ you know we have forgotten to carry a cross we said we can put our leg up on the next leg and we can declare it and decree it and all the blessing will fall on our lap no sir we have not been taught we have been taken far away from carrying a cross and following Jesus carrying a cross is saying Lord no more carnality in me no more death in me Lord no more uh, worldly passions in me Lord I want to live for Jesus I want to live holy for Jesus I want to live righteous for Jesus I want to sacrifice my comfort I want to sacrifice my convenience of God I want to sacrifice oh Lord God whatever is casual in my life of oh father and I need to harness my spirit and gird up the loins of my mind because Jesus is coming soon and I will be ready we have drifted apart from the truth of the gospel church because of the seduction of the new world age that has come in and seduced the worldwide body of Christ. What is happening today? Pastor, the church service should be one hour. Eight hours to twelve hours you can spend at work for a little, little money that you earn. All your life you're working. But one hour the church service should be. It's too long. Amazing grace service is too long. Two and a half hours is too long. Your sermons are too long, Pastor. You don't stop preaching once you start going on. It always closes more than one hour. My dear brothers and sisters, we have drifted too far away from the truth of the word of God. Now listen to this new age leader, Barbara Marx Hubert. I don't know if you have noted her earlier. Has stated, people will either change or die. For that is the choice. According to those who would concur with Hubert, Christians will need to be more open-minded so they too can receive the mark of the Antichrist. If they will not join with the global community and its agenda, they will be killed by the open-minded New Agers. And this is what she states. Quote, This act is as horrible as killing a cancer cell. The new ages see you and me as cancer cell. The new world order sees you and me as a cancer cell. And this is what they say. Quotes. The act is as horrible as killing a cancer cell. It must be done for the sake of the future of the whole. So be it. Be prepared for the selection process which is now beginning. We the elders have been patiently waiting until the very last moment before the quantum transformation there's so much of emphasis on quantum physics going on if you are a physicist you will understand what it means all right before the quantum transformation to take action to cut out this corrupted and corrupting element in the body of humanity it is like watching a cancer grow something must be done before the whole body is destroyed the destructive one fourth must be eliminated from the social body this was taken from the manual for co-creators of the quantum leap these are new ages church new ages my dear brothers and sisters having said this and quoted this doesn't mean that we are not going to rule and reign but there is a war between the new world order and between the church of Jesus Christ that's what the Bible says the remnant the remnant the remnant 
the remnant who is sturdy the remnant that endures till the end the remnant that stays secure uh, that runs its race uh, that understands the concept of fighting for the faith uh, and those who have fortified the mind to stand strong uh, in the word of God they are the ones who will endure till the end my dear brothers and sisters that's what God is calling us that's what God is calling us True peace can only come through a relationship with the Heavenly Father through the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christians would do well to rely totally and steadily on the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in these last days. Because Jesus is going to come at the blow of the trumpet and destroy the enemies of the cross. He'll destroy the enemies of the people. Those who are called the bride of Yeshua the Messiah. My dear brothers and sisters, you cannot touch the apple of God's eye and smile over it and say, Hey man, I have persuaded and I have persecuted and I have destroyed uh, the will and the purpose of the body of Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, that can never happen and God will never allow that to happen to the body of Christ. Hallelujah. That's why I told you my God is a God of war. Tell your neighbor, my God is a God of war. Come on. He fights your battle. He fights my battle. He's a God of war. He's not only love. If you do a research between love and war, the God of war comes out many more numbers than God is love. But let me tell you, he has always been a God of love. You know why? He is jealously in love with you. He is zealously seeks after you. He comes running after you because he loves you. And he will always come to rescue you and deliver you to the ones who will call upon the name of Jesus. Those who call upon the name of Jesus will be saved. The Bible says. And it is the time has come in these era, in this time, in the end of the end time days that we are living in, that we will cry out on the name of the Lord uh, because our deliverance is soon coming. Hallelujah. That's what God is calling us. So my dear brothers and sisters, where will the church be? It's a question to ask during the tribulation. The Bible says very beautifully, Apostle Peter writes in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 verses 4 to 10. It is said, written, for if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness. Hell was not created for human beings. Hell was created for fallen angels. Who did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah. There's a beautiful picture of Noah's ark. The Bible records that pitch was used in the Noah's ark to seal the ark. That the water will not seal, come in. What is that pitch? When you do a Hebrew study of the word pitch, it actually means the covering. It is same as kafir, as the Yom Kippur, where the covering of the blood of the lamb came. The pitch that God gave to Noah to put on the boat was the covering of the blood of Yeshua alone on the boat that the water will not seep and nothing of the world can come in. But it was, it was sealed by the blood of the lamb. That's what it means, the pitch. In the book of Genesis. But save Noah, one of the eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward word would live ungodly and delivered the righteous lot. One man Noah, one man Lot was delivered. Even though if you are a one man during that period of great agony, great sorrow and great pain, God will still deliver you. You will be that one Noah. You'll be that one lot. God will still deliver you because you are a man who preaches righteousness. You have the right standing with God. That's what atonement means. Right standing with God. The righteousness of God has become my righteousness and I'm no longer sin conscious, but I'm righteousness conscious because I am the child of the most high God. Hallelujah. And delivered righteous Lot, verse 7, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Lawlessness everywhere. You open the paper, lawlessness. You open the news, lawlessness. That's why I stop opening the newspaper the first thing in the morning. Keep your phone shut first thing in the morning. No WhatsApp, no Facebook, no news, no message. You know why? Because you must open the 
book of eternity that gives you hope the holy bible and read it and meditate upon it and study it because that will give you hope in your hopeless situation when the world is going down you'll say there'll be a lifting up because that's what i read today in the bible in the book of job chapter 20 and and i know that if god says so in chapter 22 if that when the men are cast down you must say there is a rising up and therefore you are in that organization where everyone's head is on the roll you're saying i my god is the glory and the lifter of my head hallelujah I, it doesn't matter what's happening to the business world outside but my business will flourish and prosper because the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the righteous and it is being transferred into my account in the name of Jesus it doesn't matter what's happening to the world outside it doesn't matter what is happening to the wicked outside but I know if God be for me who can be against me I know that there's no power of Satan that can ever come against me because Jesus is with me what is going to distinguish the church in the end time days from the rest of the world? The distinction is the presence of the Holy Ghost. That is, I said, in this body, it is the breath of God that breathes in and breathes out, breathes in and breathes out. It's the same breath of God that breathes in and breathes out of you because now you are the child of God and now you are breathing in and breathing out the Holy Ghost and you have the power of the Holy One of Israel to dissipate every social structure that talks against the spiritual structure of Yeshua the Messiah hallelujah it says further down what it says verse 9 then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters God's judgment for the church has already been administered and borne by Jesus Christ God's church is in a kingdom unto itself not a democracy not by the people for the people of the people get it out from your system if you're part of this church it's not about you, not about your family, not about your perceptions and emotions. It is because of the word of God. It is by Jesus, for Jesus, of Jesus. Good morning. All the members said Amen. If you are think, still thinking to become a member, think about it. It's a kingdom. And Jesus very beautifully said, in Mark chapter 4, 30 to 32, he said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God, or what the parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, is smaller than all the seeds of the earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes a greater than all herbs, and shoots out large branches, so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. You know what? This was a prophecy of the millennium. The branches of the seed will spread all across the planet earth. Hallelujah. And everyone who comes under the shelter, every nation who comes under the shelter of the gospel will be saved, will be preserved, will be protected, will be provided. Hallelujah. You and I are living in a beautiful era of the Lord God Almighty, the era of the gospel of Jesus Christ the good news of Jesus Christ that whoever believes in Jesus will never perish because will live for eternity it's not only just compare 120 years to eternity just a small dot in a white paper that's your life on this earth but let me tell you you are a person of eternity if you believed in Jesus Christ my dear brothers and sisters uh, many a times the church forgets one very concept that Jesus taught his church in John chapter 18 verse 36 Jesus answered my kingdom is not of this world hallelujah my kingdom is not of this world in this world you want to slap hard the other guy in this world you want to shoot dead and you know kill and destroy and you want to rebel against uh, every dictate of the government and everything that is rising against you that is the lawlessness thing are you with me that's why Jesus, when he was going to the cross of Calvary, he said, "This my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have fought so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. So what is this kingdom? Jesus is talking about this earth. The kingdom here is of 1 John chapter 2, 16 to 17. For all that is in the world, 
the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does who does the will of God abides forever he who does the will of God what is the will of God preach the gospel what is the will of God live like a Christian what is the will of God live holy what is the will of God live righteous be a salt and a light and a voice unto the nations that is the will of God for you and for me wherever you are in your marketplace you must be living in accordance to the will of God and doing the will of God not only living but doing the will of God that is preaching the gospel evangelizing showing and speaking the word of God through your social media social media is your megaphone use it as long as God has given you opportunity preach the gospel preach the gospel share the word share the word that is being preached share the word come on somebody will hear somebody will get saved write the word paint the picture of Jesus what is this world now Jesus talked about the lust of, uh, John talks about the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life but apostle Paul writes very beautifully in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 26 he says now the works of the flesh are evident what are these adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness revelries and the like of which I tell you beforehand just as I also told you in the time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God very clear statement now he's writing to the church he's not writing to the outsiders apostle Paul is writing to the church that means in the church of Galatia there were people who were carnal and spiritual there was a mix of the people the people were at a different level of faith yes I can understand people can be a different level of faith but we can always make sure that we are working towards the goal of perfection that God has set before us as God told to Abraham be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect So God is looking to your intention and intentionally we move on to perfection that God has set before us and he says very clearly in verse 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against such there is what if you live by the kingdom of heaven there is no law because all the laws of the land are made according to the laws of heaven every constitutional law was made according to the laws of heaven hallelujah so when you start doing the work what the kingdom tells you to do you acclimatize yourself you start living and you start exercising your lifestyle and, and shaping yourself according to the kingdom principles and there'll be no law against you that's what apostle Paul is saying and those who are Christ they have done what have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires if you live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit. it's a picture of the tent picture of the sukkah picture of the tabernacles what you're doing is God is reminding hey no more material possession no more material dependence no more physical attachment to the things of the world come out from your permanent dwelling places build a sukkah for me build a tabernacle for me build a booth for me live in tents because when I brought you out from the Egypt system from the Babylonian system from the Pharaohic system I brought you out from slavery into liberty that you will live with me in my sukkah in my tabernacle and the tabernacle of my presence because you lived in tents when you came out from Egypt and you did not lack anything today we are so bogged down with our business with our jobs with everything else around us that even to gather together for once a week becomes a big challenge oh you know I have to go to church if I don't go pastor's message will come to me then how can I lie to the pastor oh my life group leader will follow me why didn't I show up in the house of God once a week once a week that's why God said hey come out when you go to Israel from 13 to 20 20th you'll find they will be living on the balconies you'll be living in the tents and the campgrounds they'll live there eat there sleep there they'll blow the chauffeurs they'll celebrate 
the feast of tabernacles you know what is prophetic about it because after the trumpet is blown and the cleansing of the church has taken place and the sins of Israel has been wiped out in one day that has been recorded in the prophetic word of the word of God that one day God is going to wipe away the sins of Israel then everything who has pierced will say and cry out when they see Jesus coming in all the glory and he'll establish his kingdom that is why all the feasts have got seven day celebration but the feast of tabernacles has got eight day celebrations seven days is the seven of completion number of completion wholeness and completeness but the eighth day is a number of new beginnings there are two sabbaths in this one week festival the 13th and the 20th are two sabbaths the holy convocation the first day and the last day there should be a holy convocation before the lord god almighty that's what the word says it's called shabbat shabbaton in hebrew shabbat shabbaton that means sabbath of complete rest hallelujah the sabbath of complete rest is about to show up when jesus is going to come and establish his rule then every law of the land will be changed sabbath will be the day of complete rest for the people of god eight is the number of new beginnings the new era the new millennium of jesus that the church is going to rule and reign with jesus forever now paul makes that very clear that those that practice the greek word for practice is praso perform repeatedly or habitually those things like the world will not inherit the kingdom of god so the question is what is the kingdom of god yes sir yeah you all you all are well educated talk but talk to me hallelujah righteousness peace and joy of the holy ghost romans 14 16 to 18 says therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil for the kingdom of God is not in eating and drinking but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit for he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men where is your service are you only servicing your organization to get some dollars or are you also servicing your time your talents your money your energy in building the kingdom are you a servant of righteousness are you a servant of peace are you a servant of joy and that's the question that god is asking us where is your time spent if you want to tell me where is your time spent you tell me where is your maximum time spent of a man is either home and at his workplace are you showing righteousness are you making peace between the brothers are you at peace with your manager hello are you at peace with your spouse at home or one sleeps at the east and the other sleeps at the west or you probably sleep in two different bedrooms it's a question that we need to ask are your children functional are they serving God with you along with you ask the question are you worshiping God are you serving God are you doing that work of the Lord that God has called you to do Bible is very clear verse 18 we know that thing righteousness joy peace and joy of the Holy Spirit and we know that verse but the next verse is very very important and I lay emphasis on it for he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men my dear brothers and sisters another often question asked is what is restraining the coming of the end time very good question what is restraining the coming of the end times what is happening who's restraining it is it the Spirit of God no no not Spirit of God because the Bible says during the tribulation the middle of the tribulation in Revelation chapter 7 9 10 11 you say there are many people coming out from the great tribulation without the manifestation of the Holy Spirit no one will accept Jesus as Lord so who is restraining it the church of Jesus Christ that means the church and the Spirit of God together because there is a he written in the word Thessalonians that's why we think it is it is referred to the Holy Spirit in the book of 1 Thessalonians 2 Thessalonians let, let's look at that 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 12 now brothers concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and are gathering together to him say together 
by the church together by the life group together together say together corporate worship co holy convocation is very important to God Hebrews 10 25 says forsaking not the assembling of the saints you cannot be a solo Christian neither can you be a lonely worshiper yes you can do that during the times that you have but when there's time of holy convocation you must show up in the house of God you must worship the Lord are you with me okay so it says together to him we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as if from us as though the day of Christ had come let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition so apostasy will take place antichrist will come into the scene who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God the moment temple is built the third temple is built in Jerusalem my dear brothers and sisters start counting the days in the three and a half years of time Antichrist will show up and that is what is prophesied here is written here to Thessalonians all right so listen to this do you not remember that when I still with you I told you these things and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time for the mystery of the lawlessness is already at work Antichrist spirit is already at work behind the scenes the chips are being made one day all your biometrics has been taken by the world governments wherever you are whether in India or Middle East or wherever West, all your biometrics has been taken one day it will be given over to one nation new world order and they will dictate it and they'll say it's mandated you will not only have that ID into your pocket you will be now chipped if you are not chipped you are not part of the society are you ready and that's the challenge where we have to decide whether you want to be chipped or don't want to be chipped all right so it says there <clears throat> And then the lawless one will be revealed from the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish. Are you with me? Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. My dear brothers and sisters, it is the church. Remember the Holy Ghost comes to convict our sins. So during the time of the tribulation and the time of the sorrows and the time of the, of the, of the persecution, the Holy Ghost is still there. Remember once I brought the teaching earlier about the ten plagues, plagues of, the, of Moses and the ten plagues equally resplendent in the book of Revelation. Israel was not raptured. Israel has not yet moved out from Egypt. Israel was in Goshen. After the third plague, from the fourth plague onwards, Israel was insulated from the plagues. My dear brothers and sisters, you and I are the spiritual Israel. We will be insulated from the powers and the attacks of Satan and we will be preserved and protected by God miraculously, supernaturally. That is why in Revelation chapter 7, you see many came from the great tribulation. Many saints of God came from the great tribulation. It means the spirit of God is there. The church of Jesus Christ is there. And the moment the rapture will take place when we will be gone up with the shout of the archangel, we will see the glory of God. And along with Jesus, we'll come down and rule and reign this world for 1000 years. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is the church of Jesus Christ that will continue to exercise authority and power even in the end time days and you and I are living in these end time days that you will exercise that authority that God has given 
everywhere dispel darkness everywhere when one soul is saved the kingdom of God has come when one healing takes place kingdom of God has come when one dead is raised kingdom of God has come when one uh, uh, demon is cast out kingdom of God has come and it is the prerogative of the church of Jesus Christ that you will speak the truth and you will do the works of the Lord because that is highly well pleasing in the eyes of God my dear brothers and sisters we are called that until the appointed time until the end of the age keep looking up we are called to keep looking up to the author and the finisher of our faith because our redemption draws near hallelujah our redemption draws near and let us walk in the power of Jesus Christ that he has bestowed upon his body every minute that passes brings us closer to the end of the age and the harvest field that is ripe for the harvest my dear brothers and sisters in the fall, fall harvest of the Rosh Hashanah the Yom Teruah and the Sukkot the Feast of Tabernacles don't forget that Jesus is coming soon and if Jesus is coming soon let us lift up our eyes to the hills from where our help comes you may be going through a storm but your redemption is drawing near Hallelujah. Yes, sir, you are already redeemed in the spiritual realm. But physically, also God will constantly and consistently and completely redeem you one day. Hallelujah. Your dead body will come back to life. Your dead grandparents will come back to life, those who are slept in Jesus. Let me tell you, my father who's gone to be with Jesus, he'll come back. And I will see him in his, all his youthful age. Hallelujah. Every man who rises up from the dead will have an age of 30 to 33 years of, of age. That will be the prime time of every human being. Hallelujah. Do you think that you have become old? Let me remind you, you are going to become brand new. You'll be remaining forever young in the presence of God. When Jesus will come, all your wrinkles will go away. All your spots and your blemishes will go away. You look like a handsome, beautiful, handsome young man and a beautiful young lady. And you are going to worship God the way you have never ever. And you will be so excited in the presence of God. And let me remind you, let's lift our eyes to the hills. Let's lift our eyes from the current situations and circumstances and look to the eternity that God has in store for you. You and I are going to rule and reign. Let us all rise in the presence of God. Hallelujah. This is the time that we'll say, Lord Jesus, here am I. Here am I, O oh Father God. Here am I, Jesus. Here am I, Jesus. Here am I, Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, it is the time that we will recognize that every appointed time of God, every appointed time of God is a sign that His coming is soon. If Jesus is coming soon, how much more we need to be ready and prepared in the name of Jesus. God is calling us are we ready are we the real remnant of Yeshua the Messiah if we are not then today is the day of your salvation if you're grappling with sin today is the day of your deliverance if you're grappling with disease today is the day of your healing if you're grappling with poverty or with lack in your life today is the day of God's abundance to come upon you today if you have got no hope of eternity then today I assure you that there is hope in Jesus there is hope in Jesus. There is eternal life in Jesus. He loves you. He cares you. He cares about you more than your pastor, more than the elders of this church. Jesus loves you. He cares about you and he's interested in your welfare. More than me, he's interested in your welfare. He knows you. He knows you're rising up, you're lying down. He knows you're going out and you're coming down. And he knows everything that's happening in your life. He's not bereft of information. He has information around the clock around him about you. You are in the very hell of his hands. He looks at your picture and remembers you. This is Samuel. This is Arlene. This is Sharon. This is Sachin. I remember them. And when he looks at his palm, he remembers. You. And when he extends his arms, his blessings flow upon you. My dear brothers and sisters, that's what he's doing to you. Blessing. If you are in a place of a curse, today is the day of your blessing. Because Jesus loves you. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus loves you. I have not died for you on the cross of Calvary to pay the price for your sin. Even if I die for you, my blood will not count holy and but it was the blood of Jesus, is the sacrifice of Yeshua, the Son of the Most High God who died for you and for me. You need him as much as I need him. Tonight, 
today is your day to make that decision today is the day that you say lord here am i change me purify me sanctify me fortify me strengthen me enable me empower me to accomplish the task that you have given me lord empower me in the name of jesus i want to be empowered by you let all eyes be closed let all heads be bowed don't look here and there it's your time you've already heard the preacher preach it's time now between you and your god don't be in a hurry to run away there's no emergency don't be in a hurry to go here and there there's no emergency don't create one when there is none but stay in the presence of god and say lord here am i change me introspect your life examine it and say lord am i ready to say no to the chip am i ready to say no to the mark of the beast am i ready to pay that price for jesus in these end of these end time days of god when technology is trying to marry humanity lord will i be absolutely devoted to you that i'm married to yeshua the messiah i'm not going to marry anything else oh lord i'll have no unholy alliances oh god i will only have the alliance with the god of gods with the king of kings and the lord of lords my alliance is with yeshua i'm married to jesus my spirit is intertwined with the spirit of god my mind is cleansed and made holy with the mind of Yeshua. My heart, which was filled with hatred, is now filled with agape love. I love you, Jesus. Change me. Change me, Father. That's the best prayer you and I can make. The best prayer that you and I can make is, Lord, change me. If you have, don't have many words to pray, just pray that prayer. Change me, Lord. Change me, Jesus. Change me, Jesus. Come on, change me, Jesus. Everyone who's watching us, you can say, change me, Jesus, in your likeness, in your image of God. Change me, O oh Father. Make me more like you. Make me more like you, O oh Lord. Deliver me, set me free. Take away every worldliness from me. Take away the world from me. Make me pure and holy the way you are. Establish me. And let your name be alone, Lord. Let's all raise our hands to Jesus. This prayer is for you and for me. Father, you see these hands lifted high. We show our dependence to you during this feast, the fall feasts of the Lord. We say that in our own strength we fail, but in your strength we prevail. We need you, Lord. In our strength, oh Father God, we have tried our level best. We have obtained and achieved some things, but not all things. And most of the time we have failed in our strength of God. Therefore, we need you. We need your grace. You are our security in the storm. Whether we are in the storm or out of the storm or entering the storm, you are always with us. You are our God, our Master. Therefore, Father, we dare to take that step of faith and walk onto those waters in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we audaciously open our windows to Jerusalem and lift up our hands and pray because even though the edict is passed, oh Father, we will not be afraid of the lion's den. And though the furnace will be seven times hotter, we will not bow before that worldly Babylon in the name of Jesus, our God, before that image of the world of God. We'll be like that Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego in the name of Jesus, O oh Father, that we are willing to be thrown into that furnace of fire. But our Redeemer still lives. He will redeem us. The fourth person showed up and they walked free in the fire. These are the examples that you have set before us, O oh God, that we will garner strength. We will muster courage and we will lift up the name of Yeshua. We will not falter. 
We will look to you alone because you are our God, our Savior, our Deliverer, our Redeemer, our Healer, our Provider, our Protector, O oh Father. We do not look to the man for help. We do not look to them or to the eyes of the world Babylonian system, but we look to Yeshua the Messiah, the soon and coming King, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, who's going to rule and reign forever and ever and ever. And the church of Jesus Christ will rule and reign forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. We give you the praise, we give you the glory, and we give you the honor. Prepare us, come to us like a refiner's fire and like a launderer's soul, that the priesthood of God will be holy unto you. That the sacrifices of our lives will be well accepted unto you. Will be accepted before you, and you will be alone exalted. We honor you, we adore you, we exalt you, we give you the praise. Oh Lord, I pray that in these end time days, give your church the spirit of wisdom and understanding and knowledge and counsel and might and the fear of God and quicken the church in the fear of God that Jesus will be alone exalted. We love you, we bless you and we give you the praise. In Jesus' most holy, mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. Now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of His sweet Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. And all the saints of God said, Amen, Amen. Give the Lord a big clap offering. Hallelujah. God bless you. God be with you.